And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review. So everyone knows Matt Gertz as the Rondell guy. But when he made Concordia, he decided on a new mechanic, which is Rondell-like, but it's using a card deck where you play cards and pick them up. He originally started Transatlantic here as a Rondell game. As he developed it further, it ended up turning into a card-based game like Concordia. So let me show you how Transatlantic plays. In Transatlantic, you are going to have a hand of cards and your cards are going to determine your actions for the game. So there are six major actions and then there's a pickup action. Now you could either play with the director or the president for the pickup, one of the two, and they have slightly different rules. But let's look at the main actions. So the first thing you have is region. Region is an action where you are going to deploy a ship if you have a sh an empty ship. Then after you deploy a ship, you're going to choose one region. In this case, there's three regions, New York, Boston, and Halifax and all the ships in that region are gonna transport. Then you get to take the income of the oldest ship that's not yours as an extra bonus. So if I was the blue player and I transported in Halifax, every ship except for the starting ships uses coal. So I would use my coal, I would transport. Transporting would get me $30. It would get green $20. But because I played region, I would also get $20 from green ship. So I would get $50 while green would get 20. If I happen to have a house here, then for every house you have, you get one victory point. For every ship you have that transports, you get points for every house you have as well. So that's region. There's also another way to ship and it's called Transport. Transport lets you again deploy a ship on the board and then lets two of your own ships transport. So this way you're not letting anyone else transport and I could pick, you know, I could pick this blue ship and this blue ship assuming I have the coal. Coal is very important in this scheme because coal allows you to ship. Once you have no coal on your ship, you're not going to be able to. So there's a card here for coal. Load as many coal units as you have coal squares plus two. This is where the player board comes in. At the beginning of the game, everyone starts with one of each. But later on, you could get more, so you could get a second coal square or a third coal square. And the more coal squares you have, you are going to be able to get more coal to load your ships. And then you spread them evenly across all the ships that you have out. How you get that? There's an invest card. The invest card allows you to either spend $50 to get a coal chip plus two coals immediately, or you can buy a house, and as you can see, the houses cost 20, 30, 50, or in the case of New York, 20, 30, 40, 50. And in addition, you can take a chip of, I know this is misprinted as yellow, but green, white, or red, and you can take a green, white, or red, and you could take one of those chips as well, which will help you for scoring later. So that's investing. And if you invest and build a house, then I can say, okay, I want a green. And that's because as you can see, my ship is green and eventually these ships will score. There's also, to get those ships, there's a shipyard card. Purchase two ships, deploy one of them. When you purchase ships, you purchase them from the shipyard row here. When you purchase a ship, you pay the cost, which is the red number, plus whatever the cost is. So the newer ships as they come out are gonna have plus 70 while the older ships will have plus zero. Let's say I bought the Pomerania, it would cost me 40, 50. You can buy up to two ships. So I could also buy this one for 40, 60. So I would spend a total of 110 and buy the Pomerania and the Abyssina. 
if I do those, immediately I get two, I get two captains, one for each ship. I get one coal for each ship to start off the ship. And then one of the ships I get to deploy immediately. When you deploy a ship, the first thing you have to look at is the year. So as you can see, this is 1870, this is 1873. So you only could deploy a ship either if it's a later year, so a younger ship on the top, or if there's space in the middle, you can slide it in. So in this case, Abyssinia, I can slide in between 1867 and 1874. If later on, this was already like this, if I want to slide in Pomerania, I couldn't put it here, so I would have to put it here or here in New York or Halifax because 1873 is earlier than 1874. I could never play Pomerania in Boston after this point. So I would have to play it over at the Adriatic area, let's say, or in New York and bump the Scotia down. Early in the game, before all the spaces are filled, if a ship like Leander gets knocked off because, let's say, the Arizona in 1879 comes here and it bumps it off, while there's still spaces, Leander could still slide in. Once all the spaces are filled, then the ships come off the board and you won't score for your ships anymore. I mean, you will get one final transport for your ships, in which case you transport for 20, or in the ships with coal, you need coal and you transport for that, plus you get the bonuses. Then, if you get to a ship with color, so let's, let's just go over down here and we'll put a few ships here to show you. Now let's say someone buys the Nubian. Oh, when you buy a ship, after you buy a ship, the last ship is going to come over here and the ships are going to slide down. And there's a whole ship deck here. Starts with some young ships and they're sorted in, in order from two all the way to ten. The tens are actually factories which will just get you points. So your new ships will come out as such. Because each time you buy ships, more ships are gonna end up in what they call the docks. Let's just put one of these greens out here to show you. So let's say the dock has one white and one green. If I then buy Nubian and bump off my Adriatic, my Adriatic has a coal that's gonna sail. So when it sails, what's gonna happen is you're gonna look at the kind of ship it is. In this case, it's a green ship, the Adriatic's green. So I sail for my 30, I get my one point for my house, and then I look on my chart here. Depending on the amount of players, the victory points change, but in this case, green, because I have one ship, is worth two victory points, plus the amount of ships in the dock. So the more green ships in the dock, so in this case, it would be two plus one. If there were three green ships in the dock, it would be two, plus three, or if I had more green chips here, let's say I had this many, it would be six plus the amount of the dock. So you're gonna score points for every ship as it comes off the board. At the end of the game, you're gonna score points for all the rest of the ships that didn't come off the board. So eventually all your ships will score points. There's another action here called Ship Agent, which is very simple, you copy a card from one of the other players on the board, so you get a chance to copy a card. There is one last action, and again, I said there's two different types. There's a director and a president. With a director, you need at least four cards on the, have, have already played on the table, and then you would, if you have six cards, you're gonna get one chip. If you have eight cards, you're gonna get two different chips, and then you're gonna pick a new card for your deck and get to play it. Well, the president, has a slightly different thing. The president, which I actually prefer, it's the more advanced role, is you have to have at least five cards in your hand and then you're gonna be collecting these little chips. In this case, you have three of them. In this case, you have one. And how you're gonna get these chips along the way is when you put a new ship out, let's say I put this out, you compare all three stats. The weight of the ship, is bigger, the speed's the same, and the passenger count's bigger. 
4,000 to 1,000, 1,000 this. So I would get two of them. If you beat it in all three areas, let's say you built the city of Berlin here, you would beat this. Oh no, you wouldn't actually. Let's, let's build Columbia, which is a faster ship as well. If you build Columbia, well, again, not a great example. Let me find a really good example here. Here we go, Oregon. If I build Oregon, it is heavier, it is faster, and it is carries more passengers, so I would get three of them instantly. I would get three of these ribbons instantly. Plus, in the New York region specifically, if you have a faster ship, doesn't matter about anything else, but if your ship is faster than every ship in the region, you also get a blue ribbon, which is the only way to get blue ribbons on your mat. So what happens with those ribbons? When you take back your cards, for every three ribbons, you can get one chit on your board, and obviously that builds up your chits to score your ships. And then for every ribbon you have left over, you get $20. Then you also get to choose a card from the bank. When you choose a card from the bank, as you can see, there are just more advanced actions, like the blue ribbon action. Again, you take one card, you play it immediately. Unlike Concordia, you take this card and you get to play it immediately. And that's your new face-up card that other people could then copy. Then the very first card gets discarded and, two, and this slides down and two new cards come out to refill the area. These cards are just more advanced versions of the originals. Invest here, you could buy two things for a hundred. So you get to put, you get two chips at once and you get a house or two coal. The blue ribbon, for every blue ribbon you get to transport, plus you get to, to play a ship. The transport lets you do three. The coal lets you do your coal plus three. And unlike the regular coal, you could distribute them as you want. So you could put a lot of coal on a ship that's going to make you more money that is a higher value. Like the Umbria pays 60, so you might want to put more coal on it. Or later ships will do even more. Global allows you to pick one ship from each area or one different color ship you have and sail them. Cruise, instead of getting your normal rate, you go by the amount of passengers and divide it by divide it by 10, so a, a 1,500 passenger ship would pay you 150. There's more copies. There's also $50 per house. Cargo goes by the weight, so how, how much weight your ship is. You get money because you're shipping cargo. There's a better shipyard where one of your two ships gets two coal. There's a fleet where you get, for every different color, you get two just straight two victory points. So there's a whole bunch of different actions here that you can, you can add to your normal actions. How does the game end? The game ends in one of two, in, in one way. It's when the last steamship is bought. So eventually when you get to the buildings and all the steamships are bought or put into the dock, then every ship you have left is going to score. You're gonna score them based on your chart here. You're also going to get, for every $100 you have left, you're going to get a point. And lastly, you're going to get a multiplier on this chart um, based on your matrix. So let's say at the end of the game, you had four greens, two reds, two whites, two blues, and two blacks. For the first row, you get five points. If you have the first row and the second row, you get five, and then you get 10 more. Five, 10, 15 more. Five, 10, 15, 20 more. But whatever row you didn't complete, so in this case, the third row would be five plus 10 is 15, plus three for each chip you did complete in this row. So another three, so I would have 18 points total in this case. The more you can fill in, the more points you're gonna get there. Obviously, the more ships of a certain color that you get will get you points, but the docks are very important because there could be eight, green cards in the dock and the greens would be more valuable than the blacks, for example. So depending what ends up in the dock, what is what ships are discarded and not used in the game, and depending on which ones you built the most, you're gonna score a very different amount of points for each kind of ship that you have left at the end. I really like Transatlantic. I think that the gameplay is excellent. It was very interesting how you want to make your ships survive as long as possible because the longer they survive, 
the more points you're going to get for each chip because you're going to get more chips along the way. So you kind of want to hold out as long as you can, keep your ships on the different oceans as long as you can. You don't want to let them fall off, but they're going to fall off. But as many times as you can transport along the way, you want to transport, you want to get those points early, but you want to get those later points, because those later points I think are even more valuable than the early points. He puts in a nice history of steamships in here also, which is very interesting. It's an interesting read. I think it's great. It's a great little companion to the game, so you kind of get a feel of what was going on during this time period. And I really think that if you're looking for a strong game, this is the kind of game that fits in. I love the mechanics of the cards. It's similar to Concordia in that manner, but there's a lot of differences with it. One big difference is your card deck isn't also your points. So instead of having the cards and the cards will also score you the points and they chain together, now you're picking up the cards to do your actions, but your ships and your when you transport and when your ships come off the board and score points, that's your points. So you have two different areas in this one. You have the card area and you have the points area and you want to kind of do a mix of both of those. You want some cards and you want some points and you want to make sure that your cards fit with what you're doing with the ships in order to get the points. I felt that it was very a very different game but using the same kind of mechanics but a very different game. And this game feels really strong. I feel that I like it even better than Concordia. I feel that the using the ships, picking up the ships, having two different things where the cards run out, the cards for the actions, the cards for the ships. When I buy those ships, I gotta use them. I want to keep putting coal in them to make sure that I could get more points during the game, get more money during the game. I wanna turn that money into more ships and I wanna keep going. And it felt more economic than Concordia, but I like economic games, so I didn't mind the economics in this one. I really enjoy you know, I need to push this to make this much money to be able to buy the next thing to move up in levels. I like the blue ribbons. You kind of have a challenge there where you need to get some blue ribbons because obviously the points for the roads across is going to be worth a lot. I also really like the cards. There's not as many cards or there's not as many differences as Concordia because the cards are basically more powerful versions. I guess Concordia does the same thing, but here there's less cards in general, but the cards all have a very distinct purpose and I felt that it worked well. In fact, Transatlantic, I feel, is a very, very strong game. If you like Matt Gertz and if you like Concordia, I think you will enjoy this even more. I did, especially if you like a little bit of economic thinking in the game. And I give Transatlantic an awesomeness rating of 9. I would say definitely, if you're looking for the next level on a game like Concordia, this is the place to go, and it's a great game. That's Transatlantic from Matt Gertz. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.